So there are a couple of different components about traveling with your bike and, and what that entails. So um, travel can be a couple different distances, right? It can be a day trip, it can be a weekend trip. Ideally, you're taking your family, your friends, um, and any other members of the community that you might be able to, to travel with. So um, there are a couple different types of supported travel. Uh, there is self-supported touring, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, going in the backcountry, what that entails, maybe doing some gravel riding if you guys are recently getting into that. Uh, we'll talk about fully supported rides on the other end of the spectrum, right? The white glove surface, so to speak. Uh, and it's pretty sweet, so we'll uh, just briefly touch about uh, what that entails. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the stuff in between, right? The, these sort of semi-supported things. Um, group rides and uh, social rides and, um, you know, longer haul. You guys are familiar with the techniques of the Century Challenge, so uh, things like that can be a lot of fun. Uh, the first category we'll talk about is um, bike touring or credit card touring, sometimes it'll be called. Um, the idea is that you set your own route, uh, you plan your own meals, and you plan your own lodging, right? So um, the easiest way to do that, obviously, is with a good group of fine folks. Um, the good news is there's a lot in this region um, between our national forests and our state parks. There's a lot of different areas to, to be ridden. Um, bike shops can also help support you in that we uh, can package, really, any most bike shops offer the service of packaging your bike down. Um, packing it for you and then accommodating some sort of a shipping service. Um, so there are different ways to travel. With bike touring on your own, whether it's in the backcountry or you are, uh, you know, riding in maybe, you know, uh, uh, a paved area, um, it can be kind of exhausting to pack it all for yourself, uh, plan it all for yourself, and um, have it all go off without a hitch, right? Because things never happen like that when we travel. Uh, so, traveling with your bike physically has a couple of different options. You can have somebody package your bike up for you. Uh, people like Bike Flights are probably familiar with that service. They partner with different freight companies and help to ship your bike at a pretty inexpensive rate uh, and, and insure your bike. So, that is a great way to travel with your bike. Uh, a lot of people travel with them on a plane um, or wherever they're driving in a soft or hard case. Uh, so there are a couple of different ways to pack your bike down, uh, in some ways better than others. The other thing to consider is that when you are arriving at your destination, somebody's going to need to put your bike together for you, right? Um, so there are different ways that you can arrange that, and some of the, the tours that are supported will actually arrange that for you. Uh, a little tip, if you're not supported uh, and you're doing this on your own, you may find a very friendly bike shop that is willing to receive your bike, um, and help you find somebody to get it together, whether they can provide that service for you, uh, or maybe they allow you to use a stand and you provide your own tools. So, um, you know, it never hurts to ask for favors and see you know, how you get there. But uh, soft and, and hard cases are one of the ways that you can pack your bike down, other than putting it in a bike box. Yep. So, putting things on your bike can be challenging too. If you're on an off-road bike, or you're maybe doing a long haul, a uh, uh, long gravel, ride, you know, a long day in the saddle can be challenging. Um, so the great news is nowadays uh, there are two ways to mount things on your bike. Um, there are what we call frame mounted options, right? So bags that typically are going to attach in some way, um, whether it's Velcro or it's integrated, maybe you're lucky enough to have a bike that allows you to uh, put those items on with pre-existing hardware or maybe it's modular, it fits into the frame even better. Uh, sometimes you just have to velcro things on or be creative, right? So the good news is uh, there are lots of solutions these days, whether it's going to be, uh, you know, outdoor um, items that cross over, you know, like dry bags and sleeping pads, things like that. Maybe they cross over into your hiking equipment too. Um, there are also a lot of bike specific items out there. So the good news is things are becoming more lightweight and easier to use every day, right? So stoves, um, you know, solar options, fuel, things like that are, are packing down pretty lightweight these days, which is even better, right? Uh, and the other way uh, to, to package things on is to, to you know, get a, a mule and have them follow you around and have somebody in a van driving you sandwiches. Uh, I think that's called being a pro, but, um, but anyhow, uh, on the other hand of the spectrum, 
maybe you want to go travel with your family, and they're not necessarily into riding bikes. Uh, and that's fine, because a lot of our families like to be outdoors, they enjoy exercising, uh, but they might not necessarily want to go on that, that long ride. Um, enter in the world of Trek travel, which is my brief plug for the day. Uh, Trek travel is a really awesome option, and I'm not sponsored by the way, if I was, I'd be on an awesome vacation on my bike right now. Um, but, Trek travel is a fully supported, what they call white blood surface, and what that means essentially, um, travel for you is fully customizable. Whether you have something that you're interested in doing or you want them to maybe figure it out for you, let's say you've always wanted to go to Italy, but you're not sure how because your spouse wants to do sightseeing, you really would rather do some backcountry riding, and uh, maybe your kids just want to go shop. So the nice thing about Trek is that there are some travel options that are already preset destinations. Ronco said it and forget it, right? You plug your budget in, you plug in where you want to go, how many people you'll be taking, and the cool thing is they arrange it all for you. Uh, and, and when I say arrange it all for you, I mean they'll pick your bike up. They'll make sure you have mechanical support. They'll make sure your kids are, you know, getting their good discipline if they have a tantrum in the middle of their shopping trip. <laughs> I think you have to pay extra for that service, but it is, it is, the point is, is it's a premium but fully custom option if you want it. And there are some travel options that are in between. So they partner with a couple of different uh, travel companies. Uh, Adventure Cycling, I'm sure you guys have heard about those guys before. Uh, they are a company that has been around putting people on bikes for a long time uh, across many, many miles of the country. So um, companies like that are going to provide vans, group support, mechanical support, moral support, especially when you're out there in the middle of those long days. And let's say, you know, uh, you have a 50 mile day set up and 20 miles and you decide you'd rather be sightseeing with the family. Trek travel, they'll pick you up, they'll take you back. Uh, it's a really nice setup, and it's kind of a, a worry-free thing if you're if you're into that sort of sort of thing. So. Hey, hey we're live! <laughs> right. So self-supported trips. Again, uh, the other question that comes up a lot, and I get this because I'm in the bike shop side of things, is um, what kind of bike do you take, right? And that's kind of the million dollar question. Some bikes are gonna be specific to the sport that you're doing. Uh, others, um, you know, might have to do a little retrofit. Again, getting creative as we like to call it. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, there's a lot of great community support. You have some really well-seasoned riders uh, in the community, so ask away. Uh, but also any shop that you walk into should be able to, to give you some idea about how to get started. And, uh, you know, a lot of what prevents people from, two things prevent people from traveling with their bikes. Uh, one is the resource of time, right? And that can be really tricky. There are some ways to navigate around that, and there are others that are, are difficult to overcome, right? But uh, time. So cut down your time, talk to the experts, come into a shop, chat with us, and we'll save you some time and let you know where to go. Um, and two, it's hard to incorporate, again, overcome those barriers, get the family involved. Uh, maybe you have one area that you've never traveled to. Maybe Gary, Indiana is where your family is. What kind of scenic riding's around there? We'll help you figure it out. There's always something to be had. So uh, talk to us and, and we'll get you on a bike and get you started. And if you have a bike already, we'll figure it out. We'll get you, you know, prepared. Um, so again, self-supported. These are all uh, um, Touring bike uh, distances. A touring bike is typically something uh, people like to refer to because it has a specific ride quality. They're long, uh, uh, fast traveling bikes. They, they are prepared for the long haul. Typically, you can pack uh, additional weight onto them. Bike packing, we briefly talked about. Um, bike packing is something that you'll hear a lot about. Some people are doing this um, off road in the back country where they're destination riding, maybe overnight camping with their bike. Um, and some gears. Uh, maybe they're doing a long haul across a snowy destination in a cross-country setting. Lots of different options. Uh, maybe you, have, have, you want nothing to do with that nonsense and you just want to have a nice gravel uh, ride down in the Red River Gorge area, pack out a lunch at an Outlook, and uh, hit the road back home. So um, you don't have to drag a sled across the edge of the rod, but um, there are lots of different styles of bikes, again, that are going to accommodate some of those settings better than others. 
Uh, one thing to consider around here in central Kentucky is that we do have some elevation gain and loss uh, when you start to hit some of those gravel areas. Um, a lot of those are service roads or at least uh, have been at one point. Um, and a lot of those untamed roads can be very demanding. Um, so riding a traditional road bike on those roads um, with some wider tires on it generally is not enough to, to um, fully accommodate a, a full day in the saddle. If you are an occasional gravel rider and you are riding 85% of the time on the road, um, there may be some ways to very comfortably accommodate those, those rides. But the idea is the longer time that you spend on the bike, the more purpose driven that that equipment becomes, the more fun you're going to have that day. Um, the N plus one rule, as we always like to call it. One bike for each day of the week. Uh, the other thing that you can do is um, you can ride on a, an off-road bike. And Trek specifically, uh, and uh, Mux and other, a lot of other brands, have bikes that are off-road specific with the idea of fully loading down uh, your bike. We've definitely talked about uh, Trek travel. And um, again, the idea is preset destinations that you can plug and play, your budget, your, your, your time travel window, uh, how many guests you want. You can browse around, it's fun. I do it all the time, I like to daydream. Um, but it's really nice because you, you can preset a budget. This is not the you know, um, full celebrity, uh, you know, super pricey, crazy, expensive destination. Uh, there, are, there are travels, tra tra travel options fit every budget basically. So um, check it out if you're interested. Get your family out there. Um, and, and at the end of the day, um, Traveling with your bike, it could be one of the best travel companions. It doesn't ask any questions from the back seat typically, and uh, never tells you that you're lost or asks for directions. So um, that is most of the, the physical presentation that I have for you guys. Um, but I'm sure if you have any questions, uh, we can kind of field some of those. I get a lot of them um, in the bike shop, and I'm sure you all may have some really burning questions. Anybody? No. And if, yeah, go ahead, Mason, what's up? I've heard a lot of different um, opinions about what the best way to uh, take your bike by plane is. There yeah. seems to like all different, all kinds of different opinions. Yeah. Do you find one, one method is, tends to be the best? That's an excellent question. A couple different options will we'll present you with some different challenges. Uh, one, when you're physically traveling with your bike in tow, um, for some people, especially traveling overseas, that can be a really big boom because uh, you have your bike on your person, right? Uh, for the most part, until you relinquish it to the airline. Uh, one thing I will tell you up front is prepare for the worst. You're right. Um, there are some times when your bike doesn't necessarily meet it, the destination that you're seeking, right? Um, and, and in that case, sometimes the bike gets shuffled around in the airline. Uh, maybe perhaps something doesn't go. You may miss a connection. Um, one little trick I'd give you ahead of time is if you are traveling to a bike-specific trip and you are self-supporting, consider a, a rental in that area too, uh, just ahead of time. That way, you're not totally out your vacation. Um, and worst case scenario, it may not be your bike, but you have something to get you going. Uh, so pre-plan for the worst, right? Hope for the best. And um, as far as physically traveling with your bike goes, uh, I find that hard cases um, especially the small ones you see a lot of triathletes use, a lot of road athletes use. Those very small cases um, often have a lot of, as you can imagine, bits and pieces that are removed. Uh, removing a high number of uh, components off your bike is um, tricky for a couple reasons. One, you have just more pieces, right, to assemble. And if you're really savvy and comfortable with that, no big deal. You can pack it down pretty small. Although typically size is, is kind of variable on, on an airline, right? It's going to vary by, by your carrier and, and your destination. So sometimes size uh, affects that, and other times it doesn't matter if it's over a certain size. They're going to charge you regardless. So um, that being said, the other thing is when you have more small pieces removed, um, it is often more difficult to secure all those pieces as well. Uh, so small hard case spikes, and this is just a personal opinion here, um, are often prone to having kind of the most things go wrong, right? Just, just from my perspective, yeah. I've traveled significantly with my bicycle. 
the airlines have significantly changed their rules. Yeah. Um, it costs more money to fly with your bike now than it does to ship it. Uh, we recently went to Arizona. Bike Flights is amazing. Bikeflights.com. I highly recommend them. They're highly flexible. They're highly good. It was less than $130 round trip to fly the bike to Arizona and back. They were highly reliable and super easy to work with and super reliable. So I'd use them. If you try to fly your bike, it's minimum of $90 in domestic. International, they start at 150 yeah. and sometimes you have to buy, literally buy a seat for the bike. Yep. So my, my record to you is don't fly with a bike unless you have like one that I have that I cut in half and then you put it in a regular suitcase you put it on the plane and then they don't charge you. But for right. Southwest, they count it as one of your check bags. So if you happen to be Ooh, flying Southwest, nice. you get two free check bags and you, your bike can be one of them. Just for future Nice on the Southwest. Yeah. yeah, so, um, and that kind of brings me to my, so um, the other thing is uh, uh, soft cases can go a really long way. Those are usually larger. Um, they're gonna have structural pieces inside that help to support the bike and they're typically a minimal amount of, op of, of components that have to be removed. Um, so if you are traveling by airline, and Ben is spot on, she knows her prices. Those are all real market prices right now. So, uh, you know, it can be pricey to travel with your bike. Um, one other thing, uh, Ben mentioned bike flights, and that is an excellent entity and service. If you've never used it, they can insure your bike up to the full amount if you should so choose to do so, and it's very inexpensive to add that on. Uh, and the other thing is, um, they are flexible and they've got great customer service. Uh, one other little tip I'll give you if you're packaging your bike up, um, if you have your bike insured, whether it's through personal insurance or travel, um, through your freight, take a picture of how it's packaged uh, before it leaves, and that way you have uh, some nice evidence should something go wrong. Um, and also, uh, if you can include an extra copy of your um, shipping label inside of the packaging, sometimes that's uh, helpful too. Um, but traveling with your bike can, can can have some headaches, but preparing beforehand can really smooth some of that out. Yeah. Pricey, but worth it in some cases. Anybody else have any questions? About putting things on your bike, taking them with you, taking your family along for the ride? How do you pack your How do you pack your bike? Packing your family, yeah. Neatly, I'd recommend, neatly. Well, I just want to give a plug for bike flights because we've been partnering with them for a number of years now for the Horsey 100. And uh, you'll see a thing on their website about the Horsey, so they promote us. They actually had a representative here this year, so last weekend. She came by to find me on Saturday, and I was out. Uh, and I have emailed with her since, and she's going to write something up because she said it was just an awesome ride. And so... Uh, again, bike flights from uh, customer service and price-wise, but again, they support, I mean, they're supporting us and through the Horsey 100, so yeah, really consider them, and everybody that's used them I know has had a really great uh, experience with them, and we should be seeing a nice write-up from bike flights about the Horsey 100, so. It's $60 at, at Shellers, at least right now, to get your bike packaged. Um, give us a as much heads up time as you can of course but um most shops here in town will do that service for a nominal fee for you uh, and i highly recommend that when you return from your destination i also recommend somebody locally packaging your bike back down um, and getting acquainted with how to do that's pretty easy these days too so check out uh the youtube videos online are really great these days especially the people who are making those cases uh there are a lot of informational videos out there about how to pack that bike down um, a lot of videos out there about uh, how people are putting things on bikes and, and how they're getting there. So, um, you know, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, come bug us down at Shellers. We'd be more than happy to talk to you guys about uh, getting out there and, and traveling with your best bike buddy. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.